As if mobility isn't already a pain in the ass. Uh, the biggest trouble is actually doing it for a lot of people's and then obviously going out of your way to do it, right? Second, there's pain usually involved and if your mobility fucking sucks, it's just more pain. Pain, 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 pain. But this is the sacrifice. You know, some of us like to train hard, we like to train often. Uh, some of us train too much. Some do more than we should when it comes to training. And definitely a lot of us don't do enough recovery, mobility, things that are required to make it so that we can keep training hard. Because the truth is, the harder you train, the more preparatory work you need to do. The more you need to rest, the better you need to eat, and probably the more you need to take care of your tissues. In today's video, what we're going to talk about is improving, again, flexion in the shoulder, shoulder mobility. This is Shoulder Mobility Week on my channel. So, getting the hands above the head, right? Very simple. Now, you can see from this position here, I don't have full range of motion. Well, this actually doesn't look too bad, but if I squeeze my butt, actually, I don't look too bad at all in this position. But uh, I'm trying to get at right angles to the camera. You can still see my ear. We talked about trying to fix this position working on our overhead movement, right? Getting this arm above the head. Well, the thing to consider when it, co talk when it comes to having the hand get above the head is we need to be able to improve lat flexibility, right? Stretching out the lat, that video on stretching the lat. If you haven't seen that video, there will be a link in the description. Holding it for two minutes. But this was more about improving and uh, the flexibility in the first rib. This is, again, another mobility taken from Kelly Starr of the Mobility Wad. And kind of my take on this is that, you know, he, he has a lot of great stuff, but I kind of like to share someone who doesn't really have a ton of experience with this stuff, meaning that, you know, I've only been doing this stuff for about two years, and it's not like something I've been doing my whole life. But uh, I like to share kind of what works and what doesn't work, because he shares a lot of different things. And one of the things, one of the things that he does do is that he uh, talks about mobilizing the first rib. And that's sort of like breaking up the tissue up here in the neck and this first rib section. Now, where is the first rib? Well, you know, like the clavicle here, the, the collarbone, if you get kind of into that hole right there right where your neck is, just before your, the thickness of your trap, your first rib is somewhere in that section or somewhere back there. And kind of what you're going to do is you're going to try to improve flexion in the shoulder because a lot of the time flexion in the shoulder is not having good lat and first uh, long head tricep flexibility, right? The other issue could be there's a blockage of the first rib that's supposed to slide. I don't exactly know how it's supposed to work, the exact mechanics, but the scapula and the, uh, the first and second rib are supposed to allow the scapula to slide upwards and sometimes when we are tend to be very rounded it makes it very difficult to do that. So what we're going to do is try to clear that up and one of my favorite ways of doing this is using a barbell. Now I don't know if there's anything else you can really use. You could use a broomstick. It's just a harder setup. I'll show you how to do that. But what you're going to do, so let's do it first let's do a test. This is my shoulder flex. Let's do nice and slow shoulder flexibility test. Shoulder flexion, right? This is about my position. Can I go further? I can. But this is about my passive position. If I push actively, I can get to here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my kind of my trap and dig it into this barbell right here. And then I'm going to press very firmly. And then as I press very firmly, I'm going to raise my hand above my head and really let those tissues slide. So it's almost like I'm pressing the muscle, the trap, and the levator and all those tissues there against the first rib of the, of, you know, the rib cage. And just getting that muscle to slide, those muscles above the, in that area to slide as I raise my hand above my head. Just spending a few seconds going up and down and improving this position. Now, ideally what you want is you want someone to help you pull your arm up. And if you can, like I got my squat rack here, I can grab this and I can kind of position myself in a better way where I kind of adjust, dig in more, adjust, and then just press even harder. Oh, fuck, that hurts. Okay, so... Let's do a retest real quick. And there's a little bit better passive flexibility. Now, I could have got here without doing that, but now there's less, re there's, there's less restriction. Before I can get there, but I would have to push myself there. Now, instead, I get passive where I can kind of just kind of go up to here, have some better movement, and then I can push a little bit higher here, which is actually pretty damn good. And if you compare that to kind of both sides here, let's go see if I can get at right angles to this camera here, hands above my head. You might be able to see that, oh, you can't really tell if there's a difference, but the idea is that you're trying to improve the blockage of that first rib, and this is what makes it difficult to get overhead because that, that first rib doesn't allow to mobilize. And I don't know the exact anatomy of how it's supposed to work. I'll show a video of anatomy because I think that's really cool because it helps you at least get an idea of kind of where things are. 
Press on that tissue, dig into it and move your arm up. Something that's very simple, if you can't do this, is just have someone press on here. You know, you have someone massage your shoulders. They can press on here and then they can just move upwards. And you can just move your hand upwards and downwards. Or better yet, maybe if you have a workout partner, they can squeeze your traps very firmly as you press up with a barbell. That's one way of doing it, it's just an idea. This is just a jerry-rig away to kind of help work on your mobility. Another thing that you can do is you can get like a stick and a ball. This is what Kelly Starrett uses in some of his videos. So, so sometimes a harder setup, you have to lie down on the ground. Uh, and I don't have anyone to film me for that. But what I'll do is I'll show you um, a way to do it. Maybe I can do it on the ground here. So let's go show you this. This method works pretty well. You get a lacrosse ball, get it right here in the trap. I mean, you get this ball, put it right here in the trap. Dig into that first rib right there. It's not as effective as the barbell. And lift your body up and then you can move the arm up and down. Spend two minutes doing this. Fuck, this hurts. And it's like you're lifting your body, you're basically bridging, like you're trying to bench. And that's gonna help you improve the shoulder flexion position, help prevent the blockage in that kind of that area. I don't know how else to explain it, but it just makes it so much easier. So one of my main reasons of why I'm making this video series is to work on my own shoulder flexibility. I've been working on it, making videos like this, and spending time, primarily working on my pec minor and rolling out my tricep. Again, you can actually use this to work out your tricep as well. You can get your elbow, your armpit in there, or your tricep, and you can dig in, back and forth, two minutes. Again, work on that first grip, work on that tricep, and improve the ability for your hands to get above your head. Now, since I've been working on this for in just the last four days, I've had a huge difference in how my shoulders feel. They don't feel junky, they actually feel really good. I don't feel like a brick, I don't feel so rigid. I combine this with a little bit of a deload for my training week, I feel freaking great. So, it doesn't take a whole lot. I'm spending about maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes a day tops, 15 minutes twice a day. For some people that's a lot, but again, you know, if you want the best out of yourself and you want to get the most out of your training, you're going to do this stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.